I've often been called a night owl. And that's because it's at night that I see the clearest. It's at night where I track down and expose all the hidden mysteries and all the concealed gifts that are invisible by day. It's at night where I access my deepest self. And it's from there that I serve. Welcome back everybody to our Wednesday news edition of Lessons from the FN Master. I'm Joseph, your host, and I'd like to introduce, as always, my sidekick, Danette. Hello everyone. Okay. So today, let's start off similar to anyone who tuned into yesterday's show. I want to show a little clip of a conversation we had some months ago. Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll use that as a springboard to our conversation today about today's uh, uh, recent news. Right, didn't it? That, that, that's right. Fuck you and your safety. Because it's your safety that's fucking you. Your desire for fucking safety is fucking you. Because think about the effort you put into safety. So you're not educating yourself. You're not expanding your mind. You're not inviting new experiences. You're looking to enclose and close yourself, your relationships, your life. Fuck you and your safety. I'm not interested in talking to people about their safety. You want to talk, let's talk about what you can become, how much you continue to expand and grow and know who you are and what you came here for. If you want to know your purpose, your fucking purpose is destroyed every time you overfocus on safety. I'm not saying not be practical. I'm not saying, you know, don't put things in place to get your bills paid, but do just that. Put things in place so you don't have to preoccupy yourself with it. I've been in poverty. I understand just getting by. I understand that. And inside of that, I chose to continue to try to educate, learn around me as I went along. Feeling completely unsafe and saying, well, this too shall pass. As I've said over and over and over again, you want safety, you're going to have it. One day we're going to drop you into a fucking hole, about six feet deep, seven if you'd like. Nail your ass in there, now you're going to be safe forever, so what's the rush? Your safety causes you to not to think. Your overwhelming desire to have it safe, to consume and to hoard and to have as much as you can so you can feel cushioned and safe, is going to be the death of you. It gives you the excuse not to think. It gives you the excuse not to study, excuse not to expand. So you live with ideas like, uh, like how you're supposed to age, taught to you in 1960, 70, or 80, and you go thinking from what you learned then, and in the last 50, 40, and 30 years, science has uncovered so much truth around these misconceptions, but you don't know about it because you're too busy thinking about how am I going to have it safe? How am I going to do this safely? And so then you don't even hear the new reports. You don't get to see things from a different perspective. You don't get to, to understand there's another way. There's always, always another way. For those who are on the brink of wanting to pack it in, understand even if it's one more way, there's always another way. Life never leaves you without another option. We just perceive there's no more because we perceive it inside of what we've known and we haven't made the effort to know more. So fuck you and your safety. And it's going to be the death of you. Well, this fucking Joseph guy's got some real attitude. I don't know. Um, so we're going to look at this as a springboard to how we present and look at news going forward. Um, where are you looking at news from? You know, like we spoke about on Monday, uh, we utilize these type of things like news for two reasons, entertainment or education. And so then what blocks or determines our ability to extract news from what's being given to us? Because again, like we were saying at the beginning of this week, we are now in a position where we have to now begin to extract what's actually going on from what's being given to us because what's been given to us is so watered down and, 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 and so biased that we now have to become reporters ourselves. So uh, let's take a look. 
Um, and again, safety dictates this, stops us from thinking the need for entertainment over the need for education, and it's going, that's going to dictate how you experience the news. So we're going to be looking at the news and seeing if, if we can, of course, um, um, put through a, a sifter or a strainer and see what's actually being said in all of this. So first story of the day. <clears throat> all right. 500,000 elderly people go missing in China every year. So that's more than 1,300 elderly people go missing in China every day. Um, obviously, it, the quote here is, this is obviously a huge number and a social issue we cannot afford to ignore. So 500,000 a year? A year. Okay. And that's it? Well, around 25% of those missing have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's or dementia, while 72% suffered some sort of memory impairment, according to the report. Well, I mean, of course, that's quite disturbing. Um, I mean, are they, you know, uh, where are they going missing? Are they missing walking around? Are they missing because someone's taken them out of commission? Um, not to create a false fear or panic, but that was what happened in the beginning stages in Nazi Germany. You know, Hitler, as he was targeting Jews, was also targeting the physically and mentally challenged. And they were the ones that were being put to death early on, so you want to know that. So, I mean, it's a humongous country, but a humongous population. Um, but let's, let's, you know, since we don't have enough information on it, um, we do want to be conscious this is going on, and then ask ourselves within our lives and what we, you know, in, in how we're living, um, how are the elderly missing in our lives? You know, how are the elderly missing in your life, uh, in your family? What role are they, they're, they're, are they playing? You know, in, in, in many other civilizations in the past, the elderly were considered prime, uh, uh, important members of the society, uh, passing on wisdom, uh, proper information. Now, it's obvious that we don't really treat the elderly in that fashion today. Um, so they're going missing. Surprise, surprise. You know, I think they've already gone missing in our society in so many different ways. Uh, financially and politically, there's an issue around it because a lot of the younger people are claiming that they're supporting them through social uh, programs like, in, like, like, like social, uh, social security and that they feel like they're dead weight being carried around. So if this is happening, if it's the truth going on in China in this fashion, if there's not a really good explainable reason, um, it's not a problem just there, but it's a problem here in North America. Um, what part do the elderly play in your world? You know, when, when I was talking about directing this, uh, this show uh, um, at an audience, and what audience did I want to direct it at? Um, I said, well, anywhere between, you know, um, the age of where parental advisement is no longer necessary till eh, mid-30s or so on. And there was a kind of battle back and forth, but how about people older than that? And I said, well, I'm not close to that, but that's the demographic I want to shoot for, because that's, how, you know, that's the future. Um, but that being said, there was, again, more complaints in the room went towards me saying, well, you know, how about somebody over 40? And I said, well, you work with those over 40 and I'll work with, with the demographic I've chosen. It all needs, you know, we all have to be awakened in it. And as the insistence continued, my response finally was, fuck you and your 40-year-olds. Like, take them. You know, I don't want to work with them. Fuck them. They had their chance and they blew it. Um, that, you know, uh, it was all in half joking. Um, the half that wasn't joking is that we, we do, we, we, we only see our, our population in terms of dollars and cents. When you talk demographics, you're talking dollars and cents, you're not talking human beings. And even in a show like ours, we first have to cover the demographics so we can afford to continue to do this. Uh, but once that's being said and done, there has to be an inclusiveness uh, 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 and because there's value at all stages. And um, this attitude I remember hearing back in the 60s of don't trust anybody over 30. Uh, this was during the Vietnam War, uh, one of the slogans that were going around. Um, that's uh, really problematic because uh, the, this is a major resource 
of ours. And whether you consider the elderly, for some of you, 40 and over, or you know, 60 and over, um, nonetheless, these are individuals who have experienced life to certain degrees that can provide at least some feedback and help us not reinvent the wheel. Um, but I think it's a greater issue psychologically uh, in our society where after a certain age, if you're not that higher demographic of purchasing, advertisers have determined and predetermined and, you know, uh, news bureaus, newspapers, all of these uh, are function for money first. Um, they are the ones that first determine the lack of value of anyone 40 and over. Um, unless they're targeting them strictly for products that are strictly for those that are 40 and over. Um, let me end this with, you know, when I was, um, um, I, I had a fellow student, uh, a student, graduate student that uh, worked for a network. And she explained to our class that her job was to fill an advertising space. And she's using the word fill, fill, advertising space. And then finally she said, but the truth of the matter is in, the, you know, at the, in, in, in these uh, studios, the filler is the TV shows, is the TV programs, right? Because what really mattered was that they make money off these ads. So they wanted to make sure they put the proper filler between the ads, which were the shows. Um, and, and, and that's how they viewed it. They've, you know, they viewed that advertising first, money first, and then content later. So, you know, there's a multiple way, areas I can, I, I can take this to, but understand that this concept we have about the elderly is largely influenced and affected by how we view money and economics. And we're not looking at the importance of psychological, emotional, mental abilities and, and gifts that the elderly have to offer. So. You know, we'll take that piece of news and say that's really what might be causing all of this and hopefully not something even worse than that, as I said right at the beginning of that's going on, that went on in Nazi Germany at the very beginning. Next news. All right, thank you. And of course, if there's anything you want to speak about and expand on this, just feel free to call in. Of course. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Trump's locker room talk. Okay. Um, we heard him in the second debate how he justified his grabbing of the pussy by talking about how it was always oh, just common locker room talk. So I'm wondering, is this justifiable by using uh, the example of locker room talk? Um, as we know, certain words don't hold the same uh, uh, casualness as it once did. And that includes certain uh, attitudes as we become more conscious and more aware. So there's the N-word that's not used anymore, which was common locker room talk at one time. Okay? Um, uh, 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 the offensive faggot word, um, retarded. Um, these, these words that, um, as we become more conscious and more aware, were once common in the locker room once again. So, you know, grabbing her by a pussy um, it might be common in his day and age, but, you know, the problem with this is that uh, he's not wanting to come up to, you know, to the present time. And, you know, there is, and it's, and it's nonsensical because he's running against a woman. And so it's not just very, it's not a very diplomatic, intelligent or anything remotely like that. Um, and he can easily explain it in that fashion that, listen, this is how we used to talk and I apologize and, you know, I know it's, it was from lack of awareness, but I have more now. He could have made it a plus, but instead he doubles down like he always does and wants to have us now uh, start living back in the 50s and 60s and 70s where this was, you know, uh, more acceptable. Um, so, you know, what do we extract from that piece of news? Uh, the resistance out there to get with present times, the resistance out there of a whole section of society, and this is not just, you know, seven-year-old Donald Trump. I mean, this is, you know, 20-year-old followers of his that want to keep things in the old status quo um, that uh, need to be pushed along. And, 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 and because we, we're all in the same race, guys. You know, it's a relay race, yes. 
Uh, but it's all one race, this human race thing, so we've got to push all parts of us across that line at some point here. So that's a backward line that he's trying to say it's okay to stay at, and I'm saying to you it's not okay. Um, let's take a look and, 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 and see how else these things can be addressed. Right? But again, he doesn't have an interest in that. So, you know, my comment in that is, you know, eventually he'll fucking die and people like him will die and we'll be able to finally move on with all that, but all that bullshit. I mean, you know, that's some of it. You can wait it out or you can push them aside. Um, he's been given a degree of power because some of you who are not thinking and you're only interested in safety is what creates you to follow a man like this, right? It is as unsafe today as it's ever been and it's probably safer today than it's ever been, right? Think of what our ancestors had to go through. Think of what our primitive uh, grunt and grunta had to go through as they came off the trees in the caves. Talk about, you know, and they're dealing with lions and tigers and bears. So, you know, uh, we are not as unsafe, we're not as unsafe as, as it's being insisted. But as long as they can have you focus on safety, you've just handed over all your power of choice. And is that what you want to do? So this is a piece of news that I say, fuck you. <laughs> right? That's, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Fuck you. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what I gave you. <laughs> For that one, because That's a new one. pardon? That's a new one. Okay, like because um, you're trying to drag me back to a Neanderthal period. So fuck you. Next. Wow. Well, speaking of Neanderthal period, you just um, streamlined me right into the next story. Was that a wow? Wow. Try again. Go wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna need some practice. Go ahead. <laughs> Scientists just debunked the no sex before sports myth. So basically there's no evidence to say that if you have sex before you have a sporting event, that it actually means a sporting event. And then on top of that, I found out that Plato is actually, as far back as Plato, argued that people shouldn't be engaging in sports before Olympics. I mean sex, before the Olympics. Okay. You know, uh, this, is a, this is a fun one, right? We said, you know, uh, news can provide us entertainment or education and this gives a little bit of both right because again our lack of understanding of sexuality um, might cause us to, to to think that we can be drained but you know there, there's some truth to this you want to understand it's where you have sex from that can determine whether you feel wiped out or not I mean I think most of us out here can kind of understand that it's who and how you're having the sex that can determine it so you know, if you're a, 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 a repressed individual strictly into your sport and not looking for anything else, you can see how that that particular athlete who goes and has sex just to finally blow off some steam and get things off might get so relaxed that that's the concern that then they'll just kind of drop their guard, if you would, when they need a sharp edge. But if a person is having sex regularly and it's it's and it's flowing through their, their system, because that's like telling me fucking starve the fucker before <laughs> he or she goes and, and and faces off in the ring, so that they're hungry to beat their opponent because we're gonna offer them a steak afterwards. I could see some possibility of that, but that really is a stupid way to go because now you're depriving yourself of a human need, and sex is one of them. So I think that's entertaining and educational. Um, we need to learn more about sex. We need to understand more about sex. Yes, I agree. Some education, though, is that another study around this. Um, having sex makes men more likely to believe in God, a new research says. <laughs> <laughs> so sex releases something called the cuddle chemical, which could also inspire spirituality. Well, yeah, I can't, um, uh, there's a reason why people yell out, oh God, uh, in those moments, of course. And, and, and there is a, sp a spiritual basis behind all of this that can be explained. And when I say spiritual, I mean not religious. I mean in terms of, of, of what is brought and enhanced out of the two individuals, or three or four, what have you, uh, in the act. 
uh, the, the, the sphere that comes up in each of us that sex can bring up. So, you know, it, it, uh, along with it acting like a drug for some people, being used as a drug, which is the lowest form of, of participating with sexual energy, um, there's no doubt um, that we're so fixated on this because there's some sort of, of something larger clear than ourselves behind it all. So they're just starting to discover what you know mystics have known for centuries, uh, um, and that is the energy that comes and this God-like experience or transcendent experience for some, and, and at least a consciousness-raising experience that sexuality can be. Now, when you try to control sex, right, and for many of us, we have we, you know we control sex and how we do it rather than sex take us over. When you're trying to control sex it's probably less likely you'd have that kind of transcendent experience. You'll have a powerful experience, but not a transcendent experience, not a, a, a larger-than-life experience, because you are then the largest person in that room, so that's going to diminish that possibility. So, you know, um, I, you just seem sex-obsessed here, because every question is about sex now, but... Uh, yeah, well, I, mean, uh, I can't help but use this as an opportunity if you look to your left. My left? Yes. <laughs> ah, the book. Yeah. Okay, this was planned. I didn't plan this, guys. <laughs> but anyone can find it on Amazon.com or .ca. It's a great read all about sex. And yeah, we elaborate extensively in it about these kind of concepts. But again, um, in this particular case, um, uh, this is where history, Plato's case, which was really ironic because you guys want to know in the 70s there was the biggest sex club in New York City was called Plato's Retreat. So uh, mm -hmm. apparently we've come uh, full circle on, on that particular concept and made a 180. And that's 360, a full circle. Okay, let me make that a 180 from his viewpoint to what it meant in the, in the, in the 70s um, where, where sex was wide open and something that was a natural part of everyday life and a need and not something that was going to be denied uh, um, so that we can increase something else. That's quite silly. Um, uh, it, like I said, it's like denying yourself your need for food in order to perform better in other areas. Uh, that should be rare. And, and if necessary, because you have a medical health reason, then again, it should be rare. Okay. So we're getting, we've got a couple of more uh, articles here or something to throw out. What's next? Okay. So, um, just learned that the Wells Fargo CEO, who is retiring after, or I mean, probably being fired, but the scandal over the uh, created accounts, he will not be receiving the severance. Ah, that's a big so, change finally. Yes, it's too I many. Think it was 200 million he was meant to yeah. receive. Wow. Um, but good news. <laughs> well, and again, you see, that was us as a people being conscious of the news hearing this news, saying, wait a minute, not looking to just be entertained by it or, 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 or feeling helpless in it. Um, the, you know, this, the news is meant to empower us. This is our way to tell our stories and to tell the stories that are going on out there so we get more and more and more informed. And so because it's been watered down so much, we have to work a little harder to extract what we need from this information um, until we come up with something better. Right? The old way, the old guard, the old school of, 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 of news coming through major papers and major uh, uh, TV uh, stations is obviously changed. Um, and until we get something stronger and more, um, more looked at, more researched, more studied, more attended to, we have to do that ourselves. We have to be our own newscasters. Um, um, you might have there the story I, I heard recently about a guy who reported the uh, hurricane on his own. But, Florida, bef yes. but before we, we do this, let me just finish here. Okay. So it's because we properly and attentively listened to what was going on in Wells Fargo that there was enough uproar uh, to actually affect the change. And that's the power here. You, do, you, you find out this information. Not so you can dwell on where you're powerless, but where you can actually find, feel a sense of power and begin to make a difference. And then use our numbers uh, uh, of us as people in a, in a more powerful, directed way. 
and you know, can they do a behind the you know behind the scenes exchange anyway, and show that as a front? Well, you know, people are going to connive and do shit anyway. But at least we do our part to making sure they don't walk out the front door with all with this you know bag of of, of, of money there. Um, so I just wanted to use that as an example of our power and, and why the news can matters to us, because it's through the news we can find more power and more voice and. And, and, and a direction and things to direct our voices towards. Right? Um, so, yeah, I was talking about the guy from Florida. You had that there? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Inform the listeners on this one. So, from my recollection, he's just an average person, your normal person. He's not an actual newscaster, but he was giving updates about the right. Hurricane Matthew on an actual TV news show. And he was letting them know what he was doing, and, and also letting them know what he thought the outcome of the hurricane would be. Um, so I can see how we're being pushed into this, but I also see, see it through Periscope and other things that we're starting to take on the news for ourselves because we don't have anyone to give it to us. You know, he's a news hero. Mm -hmm. That's what I call him, a news hero. And I, and I challenge you guys to be news heroes. To go out there and extract the news from us being there and get the truth from the bullshit. Um, and so, you know, I'll be throwing in little suggestions here and there on how to clear out the bullshit from, from the shit they're giving us and at least get it down to smaller shit so we can see what's really going on inside of that. Um, so this is a news hero. This is somebody who went out there and saw that, you know, people need to hear and see what's going on there. Now I remember, you know, CNN. I think it was, uh, uh, you know, having people report I report or I camera or something along those lines, and so they get people working for them for free. I, I you know, and, and you can see that everything. Is, these organizations will always try to co-opt what we come up with as individuals. So that's part of the challenge that we have to be full of care with. But that being said. Um, you know, you got. You, we can be news heroes, all of us, and, and and inform and share with each other. You know, we have the platforms in, like you said, Periscope, in VidChat, a big giant. Our, our platform here with our company, uh, that we are are, are um, being supported by. Part we partner with VidChat, um, allows us all to have a voice that, if it really has enough substance and enough weight behind it, we can get enough of. Uh, of this information spread around that we can begin to make a difference. Um, doesn't have to be through CNN or anything else. If you can, if you can put aside a media gratification that your name or your video shows up, and just for a little while, and 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 and, and solidify it and put it across even on smaller mediums again like Facebook, not for the likes but for the enlightenment you might provide others. Well, then, as they say, you too can be a news hero. <clears throat> but this is a news hero, this, this guy. And this is what we need to be today in order to get the most out of the news. Because, again, it's one of the ways in which human beings can connect in this world. We started off with China, the other, uh, you know, the other side of, this, of this, this particular continent almost. And we end up locally in Florida. And you can see that it's all interrelated and the news is one of those things that keep us all connected. So um, that's what I, I suggest and offer. Be a news hero. Uh, uh, share it. Share it on Facebook. Share it on Periscope. Share it on BitChat. Share it. Uh, 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 share your insights. Um, you'll get better at it. You know, a lot of this may occur as ranting and, and, and people projecting their personal issues on a new situation putting out there. Uh, we'll get better at this. It's, it's going to get worse before it gets better. But we are transitioning. I, 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 I insist on this kind of two-day-a-week program so that we can begin to suggest ways on, in a more solid way, transitioning how we once received the news, since it's, again, weakening, and how we can... That once again, find new methods and ways, because we always find a way, guys, of, of bringing ourselves the truth and getting the truth out there to each other much more effectively and efficiently, and we can be part of that. Right? You can be a news hero, too. So that'll wrap up this segment. Um, thank you, Danette.
and thank you for everyone that sent in these articles and we'll see you next Monday with another edition of LFM News Edition. Everyone have a good night. Hashtag news hero. Ah, there you go. <laughs>